All right. So, welcome everyone. I uh, see quite a few of you are, are back for more of these webinars. So I appreciate your, your loyalty to the topic and to the format. Today's topic is, is all about training. And it's, it's more of a continuous improvement spirit to this presentation. So training as a solution. What questions should we be asking before we think of offering training as a solution, okay? And uh, there's a lot of people around the room with lots of experience. You've probably seen it personally, uh, either as a consultant or as an employee of a company, that we often rush towards, you know, taking or offering training as a solution. And uh, and if you think about it, training is is like many of the tools that you may have, which is, is that the right approach in order to get what you're trying to get? So what, what are we trying to get? What are some of the issues that you're trying to deal with? What are, and by having an understanding of these issues, these problems, or even an opportunity, you get a good feeling whether training is the right way to go for getting those results that you're trying to achieve, okay? So we'll, we'll walk through some of these uh, concepts. And again, I'm looking forward to any of your feedback as, as we go through this. So let's start with something relatively simple, right? If you think about it and you have an open-ended questions, why do companies offer training to their employees? Very often you get <clears throat> very typical answers that have to do with development of employees and uh, making them happy, um, trying, trying to get the, the best for them and whatever the case may be. So these are some standard reasons and standard answers that people use when, um, when dealing with training. So there are many valid reasons to provide training, and I'm not here to actually comment or criticize the different reasons people have for giving training. But in my opinion, they should always go back to two specific questions when you're dealing with training. The first one is, like in any uh, operational improvement situation, is the question, is there a gap in real or perceived per performance? In other words, is there some kind of gap, delta, between between what you have and what you actually want, all right? So what, what is that gap? Is that gap real? It could also be a perceived gap, and we can talk about that a little later on. And assuming that if there is a gap, is training the way to close that gap? Or probably a better way of asking that question, is training the only way to close that gap? So training may be one of the ways, but maybe not the only way, okay? So training is simply one of the many ways to address a specific gap or a specific need. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail, and I'll try and walk through the different types of solutions that sometimes run in parallel to training as a solution. <clears throat> so if we start with that first concept of gap, so you have at the top of the flowchart something that talks about performance. You would have uh, hopefully some kind of metric or some kind of KPI. And the question is, is there a gap in the real or perceived performance? So that's your first stage of questioning. And where this leads you is into two branches. I mean, there's there's different ways of visualizing this. This is the one that I would like to share with you that's worked quite well for us. And that is, is it a people issue or is it a system issue? All right. That's one of the first things that has to be kind of quantified or at least discussed is, are we dealing with a people issue or a system issue? So as an example, if we take, um, you know, whether you're dealing with a restaurant or, or some kind of manufacturing site, if the issues is we're, we're having uh, a lot of problems with taking orders, errors with orders, mistakes with orders, but it's across the board. It's not one or two or three different individuals. It's, it's really across the board. That could be an indication that you actually have a systemic issue, not a people issue. So what that means is, are you actually, um, do you actually have things related to a proper system, a proper system design, for example? Um, are there things that are systemic that are missing? So it's not, it goes beyond just having a procedure. It's to have everything that's put together from start to finish that allows me as an employee to have the ability to, to do my job properly, okay? So in that field or in that bucket, if we can use that, that terminology, is we have uh, the ability to look at the system's design, has been designed properly, have the right questions been asked, and do you even have things like task assignments uh, well-defined for the employees, all right? 
Now, assuming you can bypass that first yellow box on systems issues, so now you're saying, no, I, I actually do think we have people type issues, and you then break off into another split. And in this split, you can have things that are skills versus non-skilled issues. So same thing, let's look at the yellow side first, the one on the right. So what are some examples of non-skills issues? That, that means there are potential issues that are not necessarily resolved in a classroom, all right? And what you see there are typical issues related to uh, recruitment, leadership, and motivation. So what does that mean? What that means is if you think that the organization has a problem with recruiting the right people, more importantly, what we hear in the news quite a bit is problems with retention, right? So you have people in the organization, uh, but they tend to be a lot of turnover, why are they leaving? Where are they going to? Are they going to your competitors? Are they leaving the industry completely? <clears throat> These are all things that fall in the non-skills part of the decision tree. And even uh, some of the softer things, right? Uh, is communication an issue? Uh, either <clears throat> inadequate communication or, or insufficient communication. The idea of change management is also falls into this area. These are all things that if you have problems with this bucket, of, of issues, non-skills issues, then it does not get addressed very well in a classic training environment, okay? So that, that's something else to keep in mind when you're walking through your, your performance gaps. So if we assume that, yep, we do have a people issues and it definitely is related to skills, then you're getting to the end of this little journey, which says, right, what do we do now if we have the split between training solutions and non-training solutions? So again, if we start on the right-hand side, we have the idea of there are things that are still related to skills, but that are not necessarily solved again in the classroom through training, okay? And what you see there are some examples that, um, that I've had experience with um, organization rash rationalization, which just means how the org chart is actually set up the levels of work is another one, figuring out who does what work. Do people have the right authorities at the right levels of the organization? Uh, should you be having a centralized or decentralized group in terms of, it could, be a, it could be a learning and development group, it could be a support group, it could be a service group, whatever the case may be, but is that setup done properly in order to help uh, address the gap in, 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 your, in, your, in your organization, for instance, right? And you also see there as, as a bullet, the ratio of leaders to workers. So this is something that often gets flagged when you're doing an organizational analysis, right? Do you have the right ratio of managers to workers? Uh, too little or too many actually uh, gives you a lot more problems uh, with respect to having a good good structure in place in order to help, um, help the performance of your company. So these are all things that, that fall outside of that training sphere, right? And then when you get to the uh, left-hand side now, so now you're saying, yep, I, I believe that we walk through the, the left-hand side with the people issues, the skills issues, and the training. Now these happen to be uh, things that you actually need in order to, to solve it using a training solution, right? So in this, in this box is more of your traditional way of dealing with it. You have, for example, the training of new and existing staff would fall under this green box here on, on the bottom left, okay? So if you think about it now, now that you see the whole little um, flow chart just on one slide, if we take an example of a classic reason or a classic um, high-level reason that people give is, oh, we, we, wanna, we wanna develop employees, and then the challenge, what we would do, um, <clears throat> including people that, that are attending this webinar, you would be in that position to say, Right, what exactly is the issue? What What is exactly the, the opportunity or the issue we're trying to solve by saying we're going to quote unquote develop? Is it because we are having problems that people are leaving? Yes, for example, we're saying employees are starting to leave. We have issues with retention. Um, uh, there may be other things that you, you notice there's some weaknesses or, or, or problems with, with some of the young uh, staff that, that's, that's progressing through their, their normal cycle, for instance. And like many things in life, there's not just a one perfect solution, right? So when you're, when you're articulating this, you might say, right, so since the gap is all about the retainment of people, we need to take two or three different types of solutions 
in order for this to work. So, for instance, are there issues with in our system? Uh, there could be a, a a way that we're actually paying our employees some kind of uh, benefit program that is not working maybe it was built for an older workforce and now we're having a younger workforce these would be systemic issues that have to be solved off to the side as a separate project perhaps we also have a um, a retainment issue with respect to uh, some of the other programs we have in place or how leadership is is handling a certain part of the organization let's say in this example with young people and, and you could see that by by seeing it in a kind of a flowchart kind of way, it's forcing you to think outside the box that it's not just about giving training. Training is definitely something that that has a lot of value, but it may not be something that uh, gives you the results that you're hoping for. If there are people attending this uh, webinar from the learning and development world, you know that that's part of the struggle that that you have in that department is how do I quantify some of this effort and money that we put into training back into that first box which is about the gap okay so connecting this with every other type of solution is, is the key or the secret to doing this properly so here's an example of what uh, this is from find courses from 2022 so this is classically what you get from uh, typical surveys these are either done internally in an organization or externally as well so here's an example of some of the feedback that was received from this website about different learning and development portals learning and development companies or departments what they felt their priority was from 2022 going into 2023 and you see there's a lot of overlaps and a lot of these things some of them are more specific and some are a little bit more vague right if you look at for instance uh, the first one management uh, soft skills uh, you know uh, agile flexible some of these are kind of uh, a little bit fuzzy if i can use that word in that you're not really sure what the gap is. You're not really sure what the issue or the problem is. You just see that people say, well, I need to be able to give this type of training. It, it doesn't really tell you why or what the problem is, right? Some other people, like here's another one, strengthening soft skills. So if you were there physically in front of the, of the client or in front of your, your boss, you'd say, well, what exactly are you seeing that's making you think that the soft skills are, are, are not strong enough? Uh, are people not presenting properly? Are people not um, closing out projects properly because they're not connecting with their individuals? What is it exactly that we're seeing that's making us say we need to strengthen soft skills? So that that's the link between some of the more high-level comments you see on this sheet and the whole idea of, of linking it back to performance, right? The, there, are, there are a few that are pretty good. For example, the helping employees adapt to change and be more resilient. I think that's specific enough. This is saying that Perhaps you work in an industry that has a lot of change, that there's a lot of, um, you know, a lack of stability, maybe because of how the clients work or, or the products being created. So I think that one lends itself a little bit closer to an actual problem statement. You're saying this is the issue we have, and I need my employees to to be able to adapt a little bit quicker. Okay. So just uh, just and there's many of these if you search online or, or uh, on LinkedIn, you get a lot of these type of examples being shown. So having said all that, one thing I just wanted to end this, this uh, webinar on is if you truly do have uh, a need for training and training development delivery, and that is to say that that bottom left box that we just spent a few minutes on, then there's other things you can do. So if you are truly trying to get value out of your training, you're truly trying to connect the training to uh, sort of a return or return on investment, there are ways of addressing this. So this is one of the ways that, that we uh, handle it internally in our company is to try and link the training solution to, for example, skills, competency, people issues, and solving a performance problem, right? Like in, in many of the things, a lot of you are in the continuous improvement world. You want to be able to link it back to some kind of, doesn't have to be a problem, but it definitely has to be an issue or an opportunity. What are you, what are you trying to link it to, okay? So based on experience, you can use, for example, these four steps, which will be a topic of a future webinar, but very, very high level. You would define and assess those needs right up front, which is pretty straightforward. 
Then number two, you would try to design and develop the training plan. This is one that gets skipped quite often, but the idea is to try and think through this. This is what I intend to, to train, and this is why I'm doing it. So I'm having this discussion with the client right now, and they wanted to jump right away to number three, which is conduct training based on some similar training I had done for another department in their company. But I'm spending a lot of time with them on number one and number two. They're a different group. They're in research and, and development rather than operations. Uh, their people have different needs and they have different problems. So it's not a one size fits all. So the better I can understand what your needs are and what you're trying to solve, the better then we can design and actually deliver the training that fits your needs. Okay. And then, of course, uh, number four is hit and miss. I think a lot of people and a lot of companies are good about doing little surveys at the end of a training course. But uh, this has a little bit more than that, not just about surveys, but about saying, right, how do we then link it back to the initial definition of the problem? What were we trying to achieve? And are we seeing improvement in our people based on that, um, on that change? All right, just a very quick time check. Yeah, it's, um, I'll leave a little bit of time for discussion. So the idea here in terms of the approach is uh, I, I wanted to give a very, very high level uh, summary of things to, to, to watch out for when you're dealing with training and training solutions. And again, whether you're on the receiving end or whether you're on the delivery or you are the actual boss uh, organizing this, this type of uh, sessions, right? And so what's important as a takeaway is not to offer training for the sake of training. There should be a means to some end. And if you if you like it, those are the, the, the main two questions I always keep in mind. They're very, very easy to remember. And that is, are we, you know, what is this gap? What, what exactly you're trying to solve? What's the gap between the performance that you have and the performance you would like to have? And then is training the actual way that you should be delivering this? A lot of you know me, you've known me for many years. I'm very big fan of the whole toolbox approach. So my toolbox is full of different types of tools and training is just one of those tools. I may need two or three different approaches and tools in order to solve the problem that, that you think you have. Okay. And then uh, training, development, delivery, obviously all those type of things are very important. You need to build a very solid teaching foundation. It doesn't have to be complicated, but there has to be a little bit of thought put into how you want to structure that type of training. Otherwise, it'll be back to, um, I'm sure you've all lived it as well. Uh, towards the end of the year, there's some money left over in the budget and we start delivering training for the sake of training. Fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure people enjoy and appreciate training but you may not be getting the solutions and the performance that you were hoping for uh, from that training. And uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we can definitely help you navigate through this if, if this is uh, the, the world you're in, both in terms of figuring out what type of solutions are best for your, for your problems. And if it is training that you need, obviously, is uh, help you create the, the best training program for, for that, kind of, uh, that kind of approach. So I will end here so that it gives us a little bit of time to chit chat and do um, do a bit of a Q&A. So I will close this and perhaps um, open it up for the group to, to ask any questions. Yes, uh, Dennis, go ahead, Dennis. All right, um, are you seeing more people, more companies, or do you, are you seeing when you're doing these analysis that uh, people are requiring more specific types of training? Like we used to give a lot of like, I mean, I'm, I'm in Six Sigma as well as you. Right. Uh, we used to do a whole bunch of Six Sigma training and lean training and just for everybody. Uh, but do you see it breaking down more to that uh, a company needs just a portion of that kind of training like you know the the uh the, yeah. the um, change management part or the how to do uh a 5s or something like that yeah i i can uh, i can definitely answer some of that uh, dennis so uh, you still get a big pull for lean and six sigma training but that's the one that probably has the worst in terms of asking the question why right so you'll have somebody who they want to improve their their skill set they want to get better they want to have a better cv for instance 
and they're not they're not really articulating why right there should be a reason why uh, we start uh, implementing or teaching lean or six sigma or some parts of it so that that's one that comes up the other part that uh, is definitely popular and it's reflected in this survey is um, I think people call it differently sometimes we call it soft skills or leadership skills whatever the case may be. that is very popular now right and you have both realms then sometimes it's just vague we just want to improve you know our engineering team or our technical team that tends to have these soft skills that are not so strong or a couple of times then you, you do get a couple of companies that they are very specific that so we know we have problems with delegating work and managing change management so that they're a little bit more articulate in terms of um, what they're looking for in that skill set. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And I see OptiMineral. Yes, John. Hey, Carmen. You know, uh, we, we've had this discussion before. In mining, uh, it's, it's quite a very specific skill set, and it's really hard to attract the talent around that. Right. Especially if you're in the middle of nowhere and it's kind of a fly in, fly out. Yep. And I was just wondering if you could just give some comments on, you know, that, that overall uh, yep. yeah. process of like, how do people attract the right talent, retain that talent? Um, do they have to go outside of say Wawa to Toronto right. or, right. you know, you know, and just, just that overall, yep. um, yeah. Discuss, you know, you don't have to get in it too specific, nope. but I, I'm very curious to hear your, your thoughts on the subject. Well, well John, I think you, you hit him already when you were asking your question, right? So uh, there's there's another uh, client that we have right now that's looking at those type of questions. And so, that, but that's the secret. See, the way you articulated your question was correct because when you're having retention issues, so right off the bat, you need to look into this box, right? So what exactly, what are the reasons why people are not staying in your company, right? And uh, again, a lot of you have heard me say this, there's a wealth of, of uh, data that's available from HR departments, but I'm generalizing most HR groups do not analyze their data. And what I mean by analyzing data is you have data that shows who the people were, when they left, how old they were, where did they come from. There's, there's so much stuff you can learn in this box of data analysis on the retention to be able to say, now I have an idea of why people are leaving. Now I'm going to try and resolve or address some of them. And in parallel, which is John, your, the point when you asked the question, sure, you need some training programs, but in mining, what are we all seeing? There's a lot of people from the mining world attending today's webinar. What are we seeing is the mining companies spend 99% of their effort and their, and their budget on the training piece, and then they wonder why people leave, right? They leave for a competitor, they leave for another industry, they leave for a bigger city. And then, and then you get upset because, oh, I, I spent all this money developing so-and-so and, and they, they left after six to, to nine months. And I believe, in my opinion, is because we spent all of our time and money here, quote unquote, because it's easy, where you haven't really addressed some of the yellow boxes up front. So I, I think, John, you, you'd agree that it's rare that you have a one solution to a, to a problem. You need like two or three different solutions. And this is your, your question is a good example of that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, John. Angelo. Uh, you're on mute, Angelo. Mm -hmm. uh, great stuff so far, Carmen. Um, something that uh, the previous um, point was brought up, how do you get a, a client asking for effective training, knowing that, yeah, you can deliver the technical information, but how do you then say, okay, now we have to look at the environment that the training will be used in, the application, yep. and a lot of the yellow stuff that you got in there. So yep. is training, I mean, you can train in a vacuum. We delivered the training, walk cool. away, and then the client's going to say, hey, it's not working. So do we preempt that right off the hop and say, look, it's one thing to say mm -hmm. we're going to transfer knowledge. It's another thing is how you're going to integrate it and use it. So does that become a discussion, even though they don't bring it up, do you yes, breach that discussion? Yeah, I think I agree. Great, great uh, you articulated the question very well, Angelo. So uh, remember, we're, you, can, you can look at it from a consulting point of view as a teacher, but also as if you were in a company and you were the manager, but it's the same thing, right? So Angelo, you're, what you're alluding to is, 
should we push people to look at the top box, which is what exactly you're trying to solve, right? Before I give you, because it, everything is like that. If you just call somebody and say, can you paint my wall? The guy's going to paint your wall. And then he says, uh, oh, I, I have stains again. Because yeah, but you didn't ask me why there was a stain. You just asked me to paint your wall, right? So I, I did what you told me to do. So it's the same thing here. A lot of times, I've been in that situation before as well, where they just give me the training and move on. But more often than not, that does not give the results that they're looking for. And more importantly, Angel, to your point is, can we have a, just even a half an hour discussion? What were you hoping to get when you said you want to train? Humor me. And even like the, the famous examples of uh, we want to engage our workforce. OK, tell me more. What's going on? Are people leaving? Are people, did you get a bad survey result? Tell me more about why you know days and weeks went on and then you said, in conclusion, I want to deliver, I want to get trained, right? So, and it, it's not easy. I think that's also your point to your question, Angelo. So the, the, the example I just gave a few minutes ago about a, a client is because I already have a training package with a different department, they just wanted a copy paste of that training in their own department, but it's not working. In, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of clunky, if I can use that term. So where I'm pushing them is pushing them all the way back to the first box and saying, tell me a bit more about what the, your people do in the R&D setting. What are their issues? What are the problems you're seeing? If I can understand this, not only can I make a better training program, but maybe you have some issues on the yellow boxes as well. Okay, great. Thanks, Carmen. Yeah, no, great question. Thanks, Angel. Okay. Any other... Uh, comments or questions okay so while I'm wrapping up yeah go ahead Dennis uh, just one quick one I've noticed that uh, the governments are making a lot of money available for development and uh, training and stuff like that and I've seen and, it's, and I've done it there's I've done a lot of training for companies and the only reason they're doing their training is they got some free money correct and I've not yet seen that work <laughs> It's exactly so Dennis you're being honest as well so I'm, I'm glad you're being honest and and I've been in that situation before so yes we we've all played in this box about just giving training because the money's there and that's what they want they they have a checklist especially governments I mean that's a really good example right yeah. somewhere down the line somebody said well we need to get more you know uh, skills in the hands of workers and they just bulldoze the solution down the pipe right but like John was saying, when when you really want to get into the bottom, into the root cause, you go, well, I think we may have more problems than just a lack of technical skills. Maybe we have issues where living arrangements, maybe we're having issues with uh, job satisfaction. I don't know, but it's where it, it needs to be asked instead of just putting money into this box. And, and yeah. then just one last thing, before you're making me think, one of the things we always face in our improvement, operation improvement uh, world is, uh, a lot of companies would rather spend money buying a new piece of equipment like a pump or a truck rather than spending the effort to understand why they're not getting that performance from their existing fleet. And I see a lot of head nodding. Why is that? For the same reason for the training. It's a lot easier for me as a boss to take a piece of paper and sign my name and say, here's a million bucks, buy me a new truck, or here's a million bucks, uh, give me some training, as opposed to putting people in the right situation and say, can you find out what exactly the problem is? and give me some root causes, there may be more than one, and let's let's address those ones so that we get a better whatever we're looking for, right? So I, yeah. I see a lot of analogies with that. It's sometimes we go towards the one that's not necessarily cheaper, but easier from the perspective of the manager. Yeah, and I think that the biggest problem is people are not asking what is the root cause. Correct. They're going <laughs> after quick solutions, firefighting is easier, it's yeah. what we're, it's what we're programmed to do. Right? We're programmed to do, exactly, exactly. And uh, I think most people know about root cause, but they don't think it, it applies to training, right? Angela, you had a uh, question? Yeah, no, you guys answered it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was about to say, there's always a, a thought process that buying a new piece of equipment is going to solve the, the problem irreversibly versus coaching someone who may or may not stay and all that kind of stuff so exactly yeah. no no exactly. you got it right no, no. Yeah. yeah and i know you do a lot of work um angelo in this in actually in the first box right is you're, you're trying to understand is the system in place for me to be successful if i don't have a good system in place so i'd be successful 
I can give all the training I want. It's, it's still not going to give the, the results that I'm hoping for. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, for participating in today's Lunch and Learn. Uh, thank you again for carving out 30 minutes of your time. And um, hey, Leo, ça va bien? Oui, ça va. Thank you very much for the presentation. It's uh, clearly enough. And uh, for now, I don't have questions, but uh, I will make sure I will have questions next time. No problem. We had we had African representation from Madagascar and Morocco, so I'm very happy to have both of you here. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Bye bye, everyone. Thanks, Carmen. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.